I live and breathe songwriting and I'm, you know, hanging out with people who have number ones in Canada and the US every single day. So it's like, I, I know what quality is, I think, a little bit more. So I just feel like I've grown as a songwriter and just my songs are better. This is Uncover the Music, Boots and Hearts Edition. Exclusive interviews with the artists and talented people making this year's festival happen. Presented by BarryUncovered.ca. One of the headliners at this year's Boots and Hearts Festival is Medicine Hat native Mackenzie Porter. It's been an eventful journey from her early days performing at weddings in the Albertan Prairies to starring in a Netflix TV series to living in Nashville. And she told us more about the path that brought her here during a conversation we had with her on Skype. Okay, so let's dive in. Um, I mean, you've been doing acting and you've been doing music for quite a while. You started out doing acting when you were a teenager, I guess. But was music always there? Was that always sort of the pursuit? Or did you come to music later? Or how did that go? Yeah, I mean, I started um, playing violin and piano when I was four years old and taking voice lessons. So I feel like it was always such a big part of my life. Um, and doing musicals and all that kind of stuff. But then I kind of went professionally into acting. And around um, 18, I just couldn't book a project. Like, I had been working very consistently and up till, up until 18. And then I had, like, a year where I just, I don't know why, I was going through a weird phase, couldn't get an acting part. So that's when I started writing songs to try to, like, fulfill myself in another creative way. And um, fell in love with it. And I started making trips to Nashville and then switched career paths a little bit, um, you know, focusing more on music. So when you, like, do those two pursuits, you mentioned sort of you need a creative outlet. Do you find that you need both of them, or do you sort of focus on one at a time? How do you, how do you feel about those? Um, I, up until, like, lately, I was kind of focusing on both, um, because I, I personally love it, but I'm finding with just scheduling, it's getting a lot harder as music's picking up and acting is picking up. Um, so now I'm just focusing on music, um, and I'm out on the road, you know, for the whole back half of the year. So it's just, it would be too hard to kind of balance them both. But I hope eventually I can, you know, if I got to a point in music where I could take a month off to film a movie, I would love that. Yeah, it'd be cool. You guys could do a Traveler's movie. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What, uh, what pushed you into music? Um, like you said early on, you were doing piano and that sort of thing. Do you remember a point where you started really thinking about music as a career, as a vocation, or was it just kind of a natural evolution? I think it really was like that time where I was just in this dry spell with acting and I just didn't feel good about what I was doing or myself and I just needed you know something else and that's when I started songwriting and I just really fell in love with songwriting. And then... When I started making trips down to Nashville, I realized, like, oh, I can, I didn't really, I guess I didn't really know that that was, like, a thing, you know, songwriting and stuff like that until I was a little older. Um, So it kind of was a natural thing that I just fell in love with once I started doing. Was it always country music? Was there any other uh, influences when you were, when you started writing? Um, Pretty much always country. There was, like, one little phase where, right when Lady Gaga came out, um... I was like, I want to be like Lady Gaga, and then I tried to do that, and it was not a good, <laughs> it was not good. Um, but no, pretty much country. I mean, I grew up on a bison and cattle ranch. It's all my parents ever listened to. They're like super country um, people, and so that was what I was like exposed to the most. It's pretty and hard. It's pretty hard to escape country music in Alberta. It's it's kind of it's in your blood, isn't it? It is in my blood. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Any specific country artists that you look to uh, when you were younger uh, or when you started thinking about music a little bit more? Anybody specific that really stood out for you? Um, I think I was, I mean, I've always been like a massive fan of the Dixie Chicks. I feel like that was one of my favorite groups ever. Um, and I was, you know, I kind of grew up in like 90s. Oh, I did grow up in the 90s. And so 90s country like Shania, Garth Brooks, and those kind of um recording artists but now like Casey Musgraves is probably like one of my favorite artists of all time and so it's it's funny how like your inspirations like change as you go but um any you know I, and I kind of pull music from like pop or 
anything like that too. I feel like I'm inspired by all, all different sorts of things. So you released your self-titled uh, debut in 2014, and now you're on the road, uh, you're doing new stuff. How do you feel that you've changed or evolved as, a, as an artist since then? Because it's about five years, right? So Yeah, so that record was like totally independent. Like I didn't have a big team around me or anything, um, and now I do, and I kind of like, I, I was living in Canada at that time, and, and I wasn't really immersed in the songwriting world. So I do feel like, you know, those songs were just not as good, and I didn't know that because I wasn't surrounded by it all the time, I and mean, now it's like I live and breathe songwriting, and I'm, you know, hanging out with people who have number ones in Canada and the U.S. every single day, so it's like, I, I know what quality is, I think, a little bit more, um, so I just feel like I've grown as a songwriter, and just my songs are better. And also, like, my musicianship and all that kind of stuff, and I, I feel more confident, and I'm, you know, a little older now, so I feel better with being myself kind of thing. Do you find that now that you've got, like, um, sort of different messages or, or different sort of themes that are, that are coming to you when you're writing, especially now that you're sort of in, you know, Nashville, the very heart of, of everything, um, do you find you're, you're finding different themes or different messages now? Yeah, I'm definitely finding that, like, there's only so many concepts that are so universal that relate to, and you just have to find a new way to say it. So, you know, I was talking with my team about, like, is it love? Is it heartbreak? Is it a lifestyle song? Like, so I feel like there's only so many things that, you know, every person in the world would be like, I, I, I've been there. And so you just have to find a different hook or a different lyric to make it stand out. When you write now, uh, what's your process? Do you like start something and then go to your, uh, your your team and your producers? Do they bring stuff to you? How does how does writing music go for you right now? Um, kind of both. I mean, I feel like so I'm going as soon as I finish this, I'm going to go write a song. Um, and I've written with the guys I'm writing with today a couple times, and so I'm coming in with a few ideas. Um, you know, because I'm working on the next half of my um, record, I kind of like know what I want the last couple songs to be about just to round out the project so I'll go in with a few ideas and sometimes they come in with ideas and sometimes I go in and there's kind of like a musical track built already and we'll top line to that and then I would and then I do like weekly sessions where I go in to see my producer and I'll just play him all my new songs and we kind of like A and R like narrow it down on oh I love this one maybe you could tweak this and then sometimes I'll go back and you know, try to make those changes with the writers. And you're on tour uh, this summer. Um, you're going to be hitting uh, quite a few spots. You're going to be here in Barrie, in the Barrie area, on August uh, 11th for Boots and Hearts. Uh, but you're going to Calgary and, you know, a lot of Alberta stops. What are you looking forward to a lot on this tour? Uh, I've just, it's been a while since I've been able to really hit the road because I've been you know, took a little bit of time to write this record, and so I'm just so excited to see, you know, how people react to my music, and um, I have, I don't live in Canada anymore, so I didn't get to, like, hear my song on the radio, or really hear when it went number one, and so I'm excited to see, like, I wonder if people are gonna know it and sing along, like, I just don't know, because I haven't been up there, um, so I think I'm looking forward to that the most. And you mentioned, too, that you're living in Nashville now, and you're from, uh, you know, a relatively small town, not tiny, but a smaller town in in uh, Alberta. Uh, what was the transition like from moving from Alberta to Nashville? Was it a culture shock? Did you fit right in? What was that like? Uh, well, I actually moved um, when I was 18. I moved to Vancouver first, and then I moved to L.A., and then I moved to Nashville. So I, I feel like I've been kind of slowly you know I was <laughs> building up to it close to my, yeah totally like <laughs> relatively close to my family and then I'm um, just a quick flight away from my family and then uh, you know so now I'm a lot further but I think the one thing about moving to Nashville it's definitely like any moving anywhere it was always hard to the first you know year really is like meet your friends kind of like meet the friends that you want to keep forever and you just have to go almost like on a lot of blind dates and it was hard to get into the industry like I didn't know anybody I kind of had to go to random writers rounds and randomly hit people up and go on like blind dates with people like not actual dates but like even friend dates 
Um, so I was always very like, I was pretty nervous when I first moved here. Um, just cause I kind of had to start from scratch. It's a bit of a hustle too, isn't it? When you, because it's not like you're the only new artist that's coming to Nashville to try and expand themselves creatively. Right. It's every year you've got thousands of artists coming there saying, you know, doing what you want to do. Right. Yeah. It's, it is a, yeah, a big hustle. I feel like, um, there's lots of like really putting yourself out there moments and lots of nights where, I mean, even this CMA fest, um, it would be like the party started at like 1 a.m., which is crazy because I'm not a super late night person. And um, but you gotta go because you gotta like play the game and schmooze and meet people and you know be out. And um, so it was definitely it's definitely like a grind sometimes. And what what do you find uh, that the people in Nashville, sort of the the, the music industry people, uh, how do you find they're reacting to you? Are they giving you a lot of good feedback are they giving you you know um uh energy and, and sort of ideas totally i mean i feel like now i'm in, really immersed in the scene and i know a lot of people and um i'm really good friends with a lot of people and so i feel like the community here is so supportive of what i do and they're really supportive of everybody like every artist trying to make art you know whatever level they're at it's such a i really feel like it's different from like la um in how you know supportive they are and just creativity and people trying and you find maybe that LA is a little bit more I don't want to say ruthless or competitive but there is that sort of out for themselves first mentality in LA and then I guess in Nashville it's a little bit more of a community absolutely I mean I feel like LA is a little bit more cutthroat and maybe Nashville is like under the southern niceness surface I don't know um but I feel more comfortable here for sure and so we always end off our podcast because it's called uncover the music we always try to uncover five truths about everybody that we talk to at the end of the podcast so are you up for that it's nothing too crazy it's wicked no it's cool okay so you're sworn to tell the truth though that's the only hook okay <laughs> so we're gonna uncover five truths about Mackenzie Porter first job you had I used to play in a quartet because um, I, I play violin, and we would play weddings all the time. And I'd make like fifty bucks an hour. I thought it was like really good money, actually. So we would <laughs> do those all the time. That's cool. So it was music right from the beginning. That was your first ever gig. That's really cool. Oh yeah, like, I was like twelve years old playing weddings. Like we played. So I probably have been to like four hundred weddings because we used to play them um, all the time. <laughs> What like was it always the same sort of ten or fifteen songs that you guys ended up playing? Oh yeah, we had like a binder full of, um, you know, like wedding march, Pachelbel can, and like all the kind of classic wedding songs um, and classical classical music. Um, and then sometimes people would ask for something specific, and we'd have to learn it. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, first concert that you attended. I think Dixie Chicks actually was the first I ever went to. Was that Cal? Right, like big concert. I went to a lot of small, like local things, but that was like my big first concert. Sure. Was that Calgary or Edmonton or where? Calgary, yeah. Name of the first person you kissed. Oh my gosh. First person I kissed? I think you. I feel like it was this guy named Jason Herning. Oh, oh, oh. do you still yeah. have any kind of Facebook or some sort of connection to him at all? Um, we were, so we were kind of like, I don't know, like dating. Like we didn't ever go out or anything, but in like, I think it was like grade six or something like that. Um, but he, I still know his family and we're still like Facebook friends and he's married now. And um, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it was like a, elementary kind of romance oh is he, is he ever going to be featuring one of your songs maybe in the future no <laughs> <laughs> uh, a movie that you were embarrassed to admit that you paid money to see or download oh gosh I'm always embarrassed well it's not a movie but um, I have been known to watch some trash TV like 
Housewives or like Kim Kardashian, uh, Keeping Up with the Kardashians, like anything like that. So it's so bad. I know. Like I, sh- I hate admitting that, but sometimes it's nice to just like watch something that is like mindless. It's like com- don't. It's like comfort food for TV, though. It is. It's like <laughs> binge eating like chips or something. You know, it's not good for you, and it's just gross, but it's also good. <laughs> <laughs> So when you're in the trailer before your shows, uh, your gigs, and you're watching TV, we can imagine you might be watching that, eh, to loosen up? Uh, well, that's like, <laughs> no, that would be like my, like, late at night, um, by myself, like, on my laptop. I don't even put it on my TV, just because it's, like, too bad, <laughs> get big. Um, but just when I'm, like, exhausted, and I just want to fall asleep, but I'm, like, not quite ready, I'll just, like, turn it on for, like, 30 minutes and just get stupider <laughs> <laughs> okay last one if you could invite one person to the pub for a drink living or dead who would it be mm. good question uh, I feel like it would be like Michelle Obama I love her and I would love to like pick her brain that's a great answer that would be a cool conversation yeah I think she is just an incredible woman Awesome. Thank you very much, Mackenzie Porter. Um, what's the best way for people to, uh, like, because you've got Instagram and Facebook, what's the best way for people to sort of follow you and keep up to date? Uh, yeah, so my all my socials are um, Mackenzie P. Music, or they can go to MackenziePorter.com and get connected to everything. Uncover the Music is an exclusive podcast produced by BarryUncovered.ca. Subscribe to Uncover the Music on Spotify, iTunes, and wherever else you get podcasts. And find out more about us at barryuncovered.ca, on Facebook, and on Instagram. The handle is at barryuncovered. You're still here? It's over. Go home. <laughs>